In 1896, a farmer in New Zealand decided to implement a strange idea. He chose to transport 400 heads of a hybrid sheep breed, raised for wool, to a deserted island inhabited by no one and containing nothing but wind, rocks, and cold. However, the project ultimately failed. The farmer left, abandoning the sheep to face their fate alone. Years passed, and the island remained unvisited. Then, 75 years later, when they returned to the island, they were met with a surprise. The flock had not only survived, but thrived. These sheep had transformed into something completely different. They had larger bodies, denser wool, and completely wild dispositions. They had evolved into a new form, as if they had become another type of creature. But how did these sheep survive, and how did they find an island? This is what we will learn about in today's video. But before we begin, support me with a like and subscribe to the channel as this encourages me to continue. Campbell Island, located in the South Pacific Ocean, was discovered by an Australian captain in 1810 during a sealing voyage. Since the ship was owned by the Campbell brothers of Sydney, he simply decided to name it after them. Initially, the island was used for hunting sea lions and later for whalers as a base. In 1896, the island was included in the pastoral lease system, which allowed anyone to lease a piece of government land for livestock farming. James Gordon of Gisborne was the first to sign a lease agreement, shipping around 400 sheep and timber for buildings to the island. However, by 1900, the first project owner faced financial difficulties. Captain Tucker bought the lease and decided to expand the sheep farming operation. He sent three more shipments, each with about 1,000 sheep, mostly of the Merino breed or Merino crossbreeds. By 1913, the number of sheep on the island had grown to between 7,000 and 8,000. The island was well suited for raising sheep due to its diverse food sources, including giant plants known as mega herbs that absorb a large amount of sunlight, helping the sheep survive in the harsh environment. Over time, however, the natural resources the sheep depended on began to deplete, leading to a decline in their numbers. In 1931, the project was abandoned after the sheep population had fallen to about 4,000. The workers on the island faced a great hardship as they had no way to return to the mainland and were stranded on the island for two years without a boat or any means of communication. The government eventually sent a boat to evacuate them, but the value of the wool they had collected was less than the cost of the trip so they received no wages. Even after the original owners left the island, the sheep were left to face their fate in the wild. These sheep were specifically bred to produce wool, so they needed to be shorn regularly. Without this, the wool could build up excessively, putting their lives at risk. These sheep were not equipped to survive in the wild. A good example of this is the ram named Barak, in Australia, who was found in 2021 suffering from an extremely thick fleece that had accumulated on his body to the point where he couldn't walk or see, and he was in a pitiful state. When he was shorn, it was estimated that he had been in that state for five to seven years. Aside from their wool, sheep are also unable to defend themselves, unlike other types of livestock. Even if a sheep survives an attack from a predator, it may later suffer from injuries or even a panic attack and die. Sheep are very fragile animals. On Campbell Island, however, the environmental conditions helped the sheep survive. The island was surrounded by rocky cliffs and was subject to strong winds that prevented insects like flies. In 1913, the number of sheep reached its peak, but by 1931, the flock began to decline due to a lack of food. 
The surprise, however, was in the period between 1931 and 1958, when the number of sheep began to grow again, unexpectedly, and without human intervention. When the flock was left on Campbell Island without human care, it faced high death rates initially. The sheep that couldn't adapt to the new environment met a bad fate. They died quickly and left no offspring. Conversely, the sheep that possessed traits suited for survival endured and passed their genes to offspring that were better adapted to life in the wild. Ultimately, only the strongest sheep remained, and their population began to increase again. During that time, the island's plants had a chance to recover and grow after the sheep population declined, providing more food for them. The absence of predators on the island also played a major role in this process as there was no threat to these sheep. Forty years passed, during which the sheep lived freely and adapted to their harsh environment without the need for human care, despite having been completely dependent on humans at first. But in 1975, when people returned to the island to collect the sheep, a great surprise awaited them. The sheep looked like they were from the same breed, but in reality they had evolved into a completely different kind. Their physical traits had changed, their limbs became longer, and their heads were held higher than those of sheep on the mainland. Their wool was also damaged by the weather, and their jaws were warped from tearing at the harsh plants. When scientists tried to feed the sheep traditional food, they didn't know how to handle it. The sheep kept trying to pull the hay from where it was placed, causing it to scatter everywhere. This forced the scientists to tie the hay into bundles so the sheep could eat it in the way they were accustomed to. In addition to the physical changes, there were distinct behaviors, such as giving birth to lambs while standing and their ability to walk just minutes after birth. The sheep also developed a resistance to two diseases and had a tendency to shed their wool in a way similar to their wild ancestors. As for their daily activity, the sheep grazed for long hours, from 4 a.m. to 11 p.m., regardless of the harsh weather. They would turn their backs to the strong winds and continue to eat. This method was essential for their survival and successfully secured their food. Over time, however, the government decided in 1937 to designate the island for the protection of its flora and fauna. In 1954, Campbell Island was declared a nature reserve and a judicial order was issued to remove the sheep. By 1958, a scientific study estimated the sheep population had fallen to fewer than 1,000. However, the numbers began to recover over time. To address this, a fence was built across the island and teams were appointed to cull large numbers of the sheep. In a series of consecutive eradication operations, around 3,000 sheep were eliminated. By the end of the 1980s, the last of the sheep had been culled. Despite the sadness some felt, this was necessary to protect the island's natural environment. However, not all the sheep were killed. In rescue missions in 1975 and 1976, 10 sheep were saved for breeding purposes in New Zealand. Scientists had a hard time gathering these sheep, which had become completely wild. They were eventually able to successfully collect 58 sheep using special whistles to move them to a different location. The sheep transported to New Zealand were notably large, looking like regular sheep with fantastic lambs. But the care they gave to their lambs came at a high cost. From the 58 sheep, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries carefully selected 10 healthy ones and tethered them to a fence using dog collars. The scientists then carried the sheep themselves, one by one, across a hill that was about 1.2 miles away until they reached the ship. The sheep finally left the island, and the lineage of this rare flock was preserved for a long time as a purebred herd. 
But in 2017, a strange event occurred when five rare sheep were stolen and butchered. As a result, the number of Campbell Island sheep dropped to just 30 individuals. The owner of the sheep was devastated, especially since these sheep were of great value due to their unique genetics. To make matters worse, some of the culled sheep were pregnant and were supposed to give birth just two weeks later. The owner believes the person who took them did it for the meat. As for the remaining sheep, they will continue to live and reproduce, preserving their unique lineage. However, if they had stayed on the island instead of being preserved in captivity, they could have evolved to become a completely new species, just as has happened with some other species throughout history. In conclusion, the evolution of species in isolated environments shows us how isolation can lead to major genetic changes. In the case of the Campbell Island sheep, this change was accelerated due to human intervention in preserving these species. In your opinion, if a group of animals were left on an isolated island for many years, do you think they would evolve to become new creatures? Let me know what you think in the comments. This brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.